Hello everyone, how are y'all doing out there? I hope that you're doing well and taking care of yourself. Welcome back to another episode. Before we get started, I want to just say that you might hear some some like burples and gurgles. That's my stomach. Today is the last day of a seven day fast that I have been on. And when I tell y'all this has been one of the most challenging fasts that I have been on, I am ready to chew something. I am ready for flavor. I am so ready. I have done fasts before many times throughout different years. I've even done 14 day fasts before the reason for the fast was mostly for health and nutritional reasons. I wanted to cleanse my body. I wanted to get all the toxins and the impurities out and just kind of start fresh. This time I was on a fast for spiritual reasons. I've been feeling a lot of mental cloudiness, a lot of static, and I don't feel as though I can kind of like settle onto something. I feel very scattered and all over the place. And so I was just like, I need to be able to settle on something. And I need to also follow the guidance that spirit gives me. If there's a certain direction, a certain idea, a certain thing I need to do or not do, I need to be able to listen to spirit clearly. And in my meditations, I was noticing that I wasn't able to do that. So last Monday, while I was at work, I said, listen, spirit, what do you need me to do? I'll do it. I need to have this mental clarity. I need to be able to have some focus. I need to be able to listen to you better. So what can I do to make all of this chatter go away? And spirit said, seven day fast. And I was like, I love food. I love to eat. It's one of my favorite things to do. And now I love cooking. And so I was like, clearly that was spirit. Cause if it was me, I'd be like, why couldn't we do like a spa or maybe like go for a hike or, you know, maybe just spend a couple of days like in the mountains in a cabin somewhere, or I could just like meditate or like do some singing bowls or just have a nice like time with like friends. Why can I do those things? So when spirit gave me the advice, Honestly, I wanted to negotiate in the first couple of minutes. I was like, well, does it have to be a full like seven days? Maybe it can be. And I was like, here I go again. Here I go. I was like, I need clarity so I can follow your direction. You give me a direction and I'm like, not even going to take it. So I said, I I will follow. I will do it. Now, normally in the past, and it's been a long time since I've done a fast, a very long time. So I've been out of practice of it. I used to do these, like I said, a little bit more frequently. I didn't do 14 day fasts all the time consistently, but every couple of years I would do like a 14 day. More frequently I would do a seven day. So this was more in the past, in the distant past. And there was always like that three, four day hump. Once I could get over the third, fourth day, then I was good. I could kind of coast a little bit. I was I was cool, all right? I was chilling. This time I got to like day four and I was like, we're going down. We're going down. Houston, we have a problem. I just noticed that I felt more sluggish and I took that as, well, I need to rest. I just need to sit down somewhere (laughs) and rest. I did meditate. I did a lot of conversing with spirit. had a lot of time in self-reflection. Didn't watch a whole lot of TV. Uh, Just spent time with myself. Now, this past weekend, I did have to be a little bit more active because I was spending time with family. So... I did have to be on and do certain things, but I tried to kind of monitor, engage my energy levels as much as I possibly could. Honestly, like in the first maybe (laughs) six days of the fast, I really didn't get a lot of insight. There was things that I was just being still about, had crazy dreams. Like my dreams were super vivid all over the place, doing tons of things. But in terms of my waking time, I really didn't feel as though I was getting any type of insight. But here we are today because, you know, as spirit does, as God does, in the ninth hour, the information comes. I don't know why I can't be in the second hour, but it's in the ninth hour. I'm at work today, fully aware that today is the last day. So I'm just taking my water, moving with intention and purpose because I have the pace of a tortoise. And I'm like, all right, God, one of the things that was a part of this mental chatter that I wanted to have clarification around is I want to be able to move my business forward. 
been so passionate about in her power, so passionate about spiritual wellness, so passionate about coaching people, particularly people of color, women of color, LGBTQ people of color. And I was like, this is really what I want to do. And I really have to figure out how to move this thing forward. Now I would get insights. Like last year, I got all these insights and downloads and I would start something and then I wouldn't finish it. And I was like, Hmm, okay. I need to be more consistent. One of the things I've been very consistent with is the podcast, the YouTube channel, the Patreon, making sure that I have that content out. And I've now established a routine where I'm in a nice groove and it's just like clockwork. I know these are the days I record, edit, bam, 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 and I can kind of make it work. So it's not that it's on autopilot because there is effort, but I was like, okay, I'm in a nice groove, but everything else would start to fall by the wayside. And I was like, man, like what's going on? Meanwhile, I'm looking at other people like on various social media platforms and I see them excelling and I'm like, why am I not there? And of course, don't compare. I always tell y'all not to compare and here I am comparing, but I'm like, why am I not, why am I not there? What's, what's going on? All this other stuff. So I was having this conversation with God and I said, God, like what, what, what's the deal? What's going on now? God didn't answer me. I answered me. And I can tell the difference. And we'll get into that a little bit later. The answer that came up is, I'm scared that it's all going to work out. I'm scared that it's all going to work out. And when that came up, I was like, whoa, whoa, that's intense. And so I said, okay, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper here. What's, what's below the surface? I said, well, why am I afraid that it's all going to work out? The energy or the me that was connected to this next statement felt like my younger self. And the answer that came up was, well, what if I fuck it all up? Because all the bad things in my life that have happened, happened because of me, (laughs) y'all. Tears started welling up in my eyes. I mean, I got so emotional and I took a moment. I stopped what I was doing and I said, oh my goodness, okay. So I just kind of loved on me for a moment. I did as I'm doing, if you're watching or no, if you're listening to the podcast, I was just lightly placing my hand on my chest and saying, oh my goodness, little Kendall, no, you're not the cause of the bad things that have happened to you in your life. And so I just let that moment breathe. Whatever emotions had to surface, I let them surface. I, I was feeling the feelings, the emotions, and just letting the moment be what it was. And so I said to myself, all right, why is it that I think that I'm the cause of these bad things that happen? Now, a couple of weeks back, I'll also add this little tidbit in a meditation, something that came up. I always talk about worthiness, feeling as though one of the core narratives that I have that I'm trying to unpack and break down and dismantle for myself is that I feel unworthy. That's been the one that I've just kind of like hung my hat on. Like, okay, that's it. That feels resonant. But then I was listening to another podcast and somebody was talking about, well, sometimes unworthiness could be like a cover for feelings of I'm not good enough. And that hit a soft spot. I was like, ooh, yeah, that, that hits closer to home. The interesting thing is when it's not that I'm new to that statement, I don't feel that I'm good enough. I've heard that statement. I've heard it in, in terms of affirmations or, or things in terms of when you're trying to get to that core belief, the unworthiness, unlovable, um, undeserving, I'm not good enough, all of that. I felt as though I couldn't really attach myself to that statement because I was like, no, like the part of me that wants to to believe that I am good enough was just kind of overriding that statement and be like, no, 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 no. I, I feel like I'm good enough. But the truth of the matter is like, no, I didn't. I didn't feel that I was good enough. And so once I recognized that, like I said, this statement was a couple of weeks back, that really started to unlock some things. And that allowed me to go even deeper. Now I let all that rest. So when today that whole feeling of, well, I feel like I'm just going to fuck it all up was like, Oh, so if I feel like I'm not good enough, then I do things to reinforce the not good enough narrative 
which is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so it just doubles down in the, I'm not good enough. And also that I'm not worthy. I was like, yeah, we gotta, mm -mm, no, we gotta unpack all that. I came to God and I said, listen, these are some things that I discovered about myself. I was writing things down as I was at work, just kind of trying to make sure I get it out of my head. And I said, essentially like presenting, like an, like an offering here. I don't want these things anymore. I want to give them to you, but I also want to have an understanding as to like why I think that. And this is what spirit said to me. Spirit said, who's to say that the things that you experienced in your life were bad. You're thinking that they're bad. All of those things happened because it was refining you. It was allowing you to be able to see what you like, what you don't like, how you want to be treated, how you don't want to be treated, what is what it's like to feel powerful and powerless. You went through all these experiences to get you to this point. And one of the things that sometimes, you know, you ask people the question of like, if you could go back into your life and change anything, what would you change? And my answer would always consistently be, I wouldn't change anything. No matter what age and stage I was in my life, if anybody asked me that question, I would always say I wouldn't change anything because I understood to change the slightest thing meant that I wouldn't be where I was. So where I'm at right now, which is like I'm a week away from being 44, and Virgo season, I'm a Virgo. If I changed the slightest thing, that meant that I wouldn't be here now. And where I'm at right now is great. It's amazing. It really truly is. And I've really been working on my gratitude, really feeling the gratitude, not just saying like, yeah, I'm grateful for this, but like really truly feeling the gratitude and really taking some time to, to feel the energy within my body and not just make it a statement, not just make it kind of like a repetitive, like, well, this is what I do. And I'm just going to say gratitude things and write my gratitude journal, but actually feel that energy and that emotion of gratitude. Now that's not to say that the things that happened in my life, like I'm now I'm suddenly blanketing everything with like, well, it's positive, it's positive, it's not bad, I'm not gonna call it bad, because that is toxic positivity. When you just automatically shift from like, well, nothing is, is or, or all things are bad, and so this is all bad, and blah, 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 and having a very negative mindset to like, no, no, everything's good, everything's wonderful. You don't wanna be too far on either end of the spectrum. Have a happy medium. So I understand, yes, were these experiences things that hurt me deeply? Of course. Did they affect me? Yes. This is why I have therapy. These are things that happen in my life that have given me some type of insight as to who I am, the type of person that I am. And I've learned so much about myself through these experiences. Now, sometimes in, in the moment, I can't necessarily see the gift and the jewel that that particular experience is, whether it's something that feels bad or hard or difficult or challenging. I may not see it in that moment, but years later, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if that didn't happen, then that, and it's like a domino effect. That had to happen for this, for this, for this, and all these other subsequent things. So when God said that to me, it was like, I'm simply here to be a guide to you. And no matter what you do, whatever decision, whatever choice you make, I'm going to still love you. So even if you don't take my advice, even if you don't take my guidance, it's okay. I will nudge you to kind of make sure that you stay on course a little bit. You're going to veer off and what you do veer off quite a bit, but I'll bring you back. And at some point I'm going to be here ready and waiting for you to say, I want to follow your lead. I've kind of sprinkled this into previous episodes. It wasn't really a main topic, but I've talked about it in other podcast episodes. If you've been following me, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're new, hello, welcome. I've talked about the lack of trust in God, feeling as though, mm, I don't know if you if you got the situation, like you see how you see how intense and complex this is and multi-layered, multifaceted. You you gonna handle all aspects of this in one fail swoop or like in a how's this gonna happen? The human me wants so bad to know the plan. Like, 
can I at least have an idea of how it's going to happen? Like, can I, can I, can I get a little peek behind the curtain to know what the plan's going to be? And (laughs) there was one time I said that to spirit and spirit said so clearly to me, if you knew what I was going to do, you would, you would try to thwart the plan in some way. So no, I'm not going to tell you. (laughs) <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to tell you ahead of time. We're going to just keep going. And I just want you to trust. And if you can't trust, that's fine. But this is how we're going to do. I'm not sure if it was the previous episode or two episodes before, but that's one of the things that I've talked about is really being in a space now in my life where I actually move based on the steps that spirit gives me. There's some analogy that somebody has said some way, shape, or form, and I'm going to not get it completely accurate, but somebody said, you can drive from New York to Los Angeles, and it could be completely in the dark for the entire trip, and all you see in front of you is as far as your headlights go, and you can make it from New York to Los Angeles which means that you do not need to see the entire plan. You don't need to see the entire route. You're not able to see it. You only see, but as far as the headlights go. So if you can do that, why can't you then trust in what God source spirit has for you? This brings me into some of the questions that I get from people is like, well, how are you able to determine whether it's spirit talking to you, God talking to you or yourself? And I always say, and you know what I'm going to say? Y'all know what I'm going to say. You know, it starts with an M, ends in a shun. Meditation. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Meditation truly is the way for you to discern whether it's God talking to you or it's some other aspect of yourself, your personality, younger self, narratives, all these other things that have been attached to you that you have absorbed and believed and so now you carry it. So all that chatter that goes on in your head, that's you. And all the different myriads and facets and things like that, that's you. What I have found for myself is that when I meditate and you have to do it, A lot of times, I say this often, it is a continuous practice. I have not stopped meditating from the time that I started as a teenager. I still meditate. It changes form, looks different, but I still meditate. When you get into the practice and you get enough repetitions with it, I notice for myself the chatter that I hear, the the voices and all the stuff that's like at the surface, I'm like, oh, that's me. But then there's a moment where it all just falls away and it gets quiet enough that you can kind of hear like a whisper. And it's like, hello, Hello. I'm here, I'm I'm right here. here. And it took me some time after whittling down to that whisper that I was like, oh, that's, oh, there you are. And so the question can then become, well, why is it like, under so much layers of noise and junk. Let me just talk from my own personal experience. This is the only experience I can speak from. So many times in my life, I have come to God with guidance or, or come to God with like situations that I need help with and said, okay, I don't know what to do. A or B, left or right, up or down. And God will say, B, right, up. And I'll be like, eh. Yeah, I think I want to pick A. Yeah, maybe I want to go left. Down seems a little bit more appealing. It's more fun. It's like, a, hmm, I don't have to put so much effort in the down. It's like, I feel as though God is kind of sitting there going, wow, my child. <laughs> my child. Okay. You, you know, do what you want to do. Do what you need to do. I think that the voice isn't always muffled. There are times where the answer comes clear and it comes quick. And I don't follow the clear quick advice. I follow what seems like it's going to get me there or what seems like it's the more fun quote unquote option, or it seems like the, 
the path of least resistance when it ends up being the path of all the resistances, like all the resistance. God definitely does communicate to me very clearly. I don't always follow what God says. One of the conversations I was having, I was speaking about this in a previous episode, was like about the beliefs. I was having a conversation with my mom about this. Is like when you're able to like really pull back those belief systems that you have, those core beliefs, because there's all these different things that we have that are layered to like very serious intentional beliefs that we have. If you've ever watched Inside Out 2, it's a great movie. I highly recommend y'all watch it because it's a really great visual representation of what I'm talking about having these core beliefs about yourself that change. They start out one way, they go this way, they go that way. And you're trying to like find yourself in the midst of all these narratives and trying to understand who you are and also trying to understand how to get to the narratives. Because one of the things that I've learned about myself is that these core narratives are kind of like tied to my ego. They're they're tied to my identity or how I identify myself as a human being. If I were to like really really strip down to it and like completely remove it, then it would feel as like there's this existential crisis of like, well then I don't know who I am. I don't I, I don't know who I am. It's like a, a very popular term, ego death. It's a real thing. It's a very real thing. Ego death is when You are stripping away all of these things that you feel make up you. So when people ask you, well, who are you? And you say, oh, my name is Kendall. I'm this years old. I'm from this place. This is the job I have. I'm a parent to this person, a spouse to this person. But But that's not who you are. These are the things that, yes, are a part of your life, a part of your identity, but it's not who you are at your core. The ego part of you wants so desperately to hold on to that, those identities because it feels as though that's what I have. That That's the only way I know who I am. But there's a, a part of you, a, a grander you really, not a part. It's all of you that is so much bigger than that. It's so wider than that. That has nothing to do with these identifiers. I've heard that you can get to this place where you can really strip yourself down. You can have that ego death and then be able to recognize that, yes, I have these identities, but these are not me. And so, yes, I can live in this, in this box or I can be identified as this. And I understand that it's not the fullness of me. We kind of went off a little bit, but we're going to get back to like, how are you able to listen to God's spirit and discern the, the difference between you and God? Doing meditation and doing it often, as often as you can, in whatever way, shape, or form that you can. The more that you meditate, the more that you'll be able to clear out that kind of like mental chatter. I also, I was asking this question of some family and chosen family recently because I want to be able to understand for other people who I know are spiritual, who are no, who I know are very well versed in in their spirituality, spiritual practices, religion, ideologies, all the things, and have really, really deep, intimate connections with God. I wanted to know how does God communicate to you. And what's interesting is that it was pretty much the same answer across the board, and it is alignment with my answer as well which is God communicates, it's, it's rare to hear a voice. I think sometimes we're expecting to ask an answer, whether it's out loud or internally, and then we hear, yes, my child, you're gonna get this, and this is what I want you to do. We're waiting for a voice. Less than five times in my life have I heard a very clear, definitive voice that I knew was God. The way that God communicates to me is through dreams. And that's really kind of the more popular answer. And also like feelings. Your feelings are there for a reason. You have to also be able to discern between feelings tied to beliefs and past histories and past narratives and feelings that are more resonant and aligned with who you are and the truth of who you are. Meditation helps with that. When you're able to know, okay, this emotion is tied to this thing, this experience that I've had. And so I know that I react or I respond or I feel something internally that lets me know, "Mm, okay, no, 
even in those situations, if it's tied to something in your past, that could be letting you know like, hey, maybe we don't wanna go down this road again. <laughs> like maybe we just need to kind of take a step back and just give ourselves a breather. So when you feel that emotion that feels resonant to something that happened in your past, it's a really great opportunity to say, okay, this feels familiar and why does it feel familiar? Why, how did I get here? Is this a pattern that I'm repeating? And if it is, how am I able to break that pattern? Obviously this doesn't feel good. So I don't wanna pick something that doesn't feel good. I wanna pick something that feels good to my system and feels more true and aligned with me. But oftentimes, if you go all the way back to the beginning of this episode, we don't pick the thing that feels right because we're so scared of it. We're so scared that like, oh no, it's like, ooh, it's like fine china. I can't, ooh, I know I can't touch it. Ooh, no, I don't wanna, it's delicate. And really the truth, ah, oh, it's so powerful. We're able to embrace it. We're able to to squeeze it, to, to hold on to it, love on it, hug on it, dance with it, ooh, move with it. Really the fragile part is the part that we hold so dear that is the broken parts or the sad parts. Those are the fragile pieces. And yes, we do need to give those absolute love and care, but we don't need to tend to those so much as if those are the things that we need. I'm pretty sure if I were to ask many of you watching this and please comment, share um, your thoughts about this. If I were to ask y'all, did you have moments in your life where you knew spirit, God was telling you something? Like you could feel internally, this was what you should do. I'm pretty sure that many of you have examples where you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely knew God said, do this. Maybe you did it, maybe you didn't do it. Doesn't matter about the after effect. It's just being able to recognize that you at least were able to notice, yes, I could feel the moment when God was communicating with me, when I could tap in to that wisdom, to that higher power, to the divine plan, to the divine being. We are able to to tap into that and we have that all the time. It feels as though we're distant from it. It feels as though it's outside of us. It feels as though we have to jump through all these hoops and do all these things and it really doesn't take that. I think the reason why meditation is so hard, and I'll say this from my own personal experience, I think the reason why meditation is so hard for people is because it's very hard to be still. It's so easy to move. It's so easy to be distracted and jump from here to there and do this and do that and just have all the things going on and like, ooh, I got all this. It is hard to be still. Stillness takes courage. You hear that for the people in the back? Stillness Stillness takes takes courage courage. to be able to go into a meditation, to do it consistently, because what surfaces in meditation is not like fluffy things. I mean, yes, I'll experience peaceful moments in meditation. I'll experience moments of just like pure bliss, but I will also experience things that come up to the surface. I was like, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that statement. I wasn't ready for that thing. I wasn't ready for that epiphany. But I was because I'm taking the moment to be still and I'm allowing everything else around me to just fall away so I can listen and I can hone in on God and what God has for me. This fast, y'all, has been extremely intense. I want to now move forward slowly. What I also tend to do is like when I find the answer to something or when I'm like, oh, that's what it is. Okay, all right. It's like, then I kind of move forward with like really powerful, forceful energy. But then I burn out and I end up doing the same thing that I always do, which is like, I get so excited, I start something and then I stop. Now I'm like, how do I move forward with tempered energy? I don't have to boil the entire ocean. I don't even know why somebody, I don't know why that analogy even exists. Why would somebody want to boil the ocean? I don't want to try to take on something so huge and massive that it feels daunting and that it binds me once again back into that pattern of like, well, then I can't do it because it's so big. It's just so overwhelming and I don't even know where to start. I'm going to start piece by piece, moving step by step, and I will eventually get to where I need to go. So that's where 
I'm going to play with, that's where I'm at right now is kind of playing with how do I move with tempered energy, not overexertion, not way too, you know, okay, I'm just going to let God handle everything. That's not how it's going to work. Tempered energy, one step at a time and patience, faith, trust that what is for me is for me. And as long as I take the steps necessary to move in the direction of what is for me, everything's going to fall into place as need be. Ooh, Lord, y'all, it is six (laughs) o'clock. And I'm so ready for this fast to be over, but it's been really insightful and I'm excited for what is to come. I'm excited for all the things that I'm going to continue to learn about myself and these new ways that I'm going to move and trying something different rather than how I've done things before. Come on this journey with me, y'all. Please do. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Please, please, please. If you're listening to the podcast, please write a review and rate it. Share with as many people as you need to. Sharing is caring. And make sure that you join the Patreon. Because I'm going to start, I've already been starting to add a little bit of stuff here and there. I have videos that I've recorded that I didn't actually put up. So I'm going to be putting them on there and just letting it fly and just seeing what happens. So it's going to be on there. All right. Thank y'all. Catch y'all on the next episode.